Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be making something for the garden. As you can see I'm outside, it is warming up, the sun is beautiful. Of course I want to get in the garden, I want to plant some flowers, I want to do, you know, get out and plant some vegetables and just get, you know, get the summer going. Do you know what I mean? Um, but of course um, I don't have a very good kneeling pad. And I need one. So you know what happens when you don't have one and you need something? You make it yourself. So I have gone to the trouble of making it myself and I'm going to share the pattern for you for free, of course, which will be over at the blog post, which will be linked below as well as the comments section. Um, so I'm going to show you the first version. The first version is a cute little kneeling pad. It's 12 inches by 18 inches and three inches thick. It is the perfect size for kneeling exactly what you want it for. It's got a little handle, has a zipper so that you can take off the cover and wash it because of course it gets a little dirty depending on how wet your soil is. But um, I will be showing you how to make this in the tutorial but I'm also going to be showing you how to make the deluxe version. So if you're interested in learning the deluxe version then you have to stay to the very end so that you can learn how to make this into an even better kneeling pad. Here is the deluxe version. Two handles, twice the size, twice as big, twice as comfy. Oh my goodness, I'm obsessed. I made this with pockets so you could put your tools, put your little clippers in there, put your little hand tools. Now of course, you don't wanna be kneeling on these things so it's just something that you would use to just transport your things from the shed so you don't have to make many trips. So when you get to your spot, you can take these out. The idea, of course, is that you're using these and that's why you're carrying them around your yard. My husband liked to say, um, people are gonna hurt themselves, but I hope that people know enough that this is just for transporting and not necessarily kneeling. But you could put your gloves in there and keep those in because of course those wouldn't hurt you. So again, all the information for this will be at the blog post. I will also have a PDF download that you can purchase over at the Etsy shop. And if you're already a member over at Patreon, then I will provide that PDF for free over there for any of my supporters. Um, if you don't already know, Patreon, um, I give all of my paid patterns for free over there as long as you are a supporter. And for as little as $1 a month, you'll get all of my PDF patterns for free. So if you're interested in learning how to make this deluxe or just the simple version of this little pad here, um, stay tuned. And if you like it, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment if you have any questions. And let's just get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the foam that I'll be using for this cushion. I, I'm using a memory foam, and this is actually a mattress topper. I purchased it off of an auction house, and I've just been sort of cutting pieces as I need them. I got the whole queen size for like 20 bucks, which is a great deal. So I just cut the piece that I need. It's three inches... Um, thick so it's a wonderful size and um, this is pretty much a standard size that you can find over at your sewing store or craft supply store um, so it shouldn't be too difficult but if you don't find three inches you could um, adjust the pattern to suit the depth of your cushion or you could stack so if you had um, a 1.5 inch um, thick you could put two and kind of use some glue and um, that's very easy to do something like that so this is my cushion I'm using waterproof canvas as the bottom of my cushion and I'll be using a regular canvas for the top um, this canvas is just really pretty so that's why I chose to use this for the top and the sides and this is more durable and it'll withstand to kneeling on you know rocks and sticks and things like that so I have all my pieces ready to go. I have my side panels. I have the top, the other side, and then I have two pieces that'll be the last panel and this is where the zipper is gonna go. So everything is over at the blog, of course, so you have a list of everything you need to cut out. I'm going to be making one cushion on camera and then I'm gonna show you how to alter the cushions um, later on in the video to make it a little bit more 
um, usable as well as um, making it double the size. So stay tuned for that if you're interested, but we're just gonna work on this standard one size cushion, which is still a great size as it is 18 inches by 12 inches. Um, wide so so I'm just going to talk about the handle that we are putting on this this is a webbing so we're going to use that as the handle on the top of the cushion and then I'm going to be using this zipper this is a zipper by the yard and we'll use this for one of the long panels so we'll work on making that panel first so this won't be a lined um, cushion um, just because you won't see the inside of it. Um, if you do have a woven canvas, like this is woven, um, you can put, you can do a zigzag stitch around the edges of your fabric if you want to, just to prevent further fraying, or you can um, just throw it under your serger. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to put our one piece of fabric that's about two inches wide, and we're going to place that along the one side of the zipper. So we're just gonna put it on top of the zipper so the zipper pull is up. We're going to clip that edge lining up with the zipper. So it'll be just like that and once it's sewn then It'll look like that. So we'll go over to the sewing machine now. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to a zipper foot. And this is what a zipper foot looks like. If you're new to zipper feet, I do have a video on how to use a zipper foot. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and put that on the machine. And then we can Take our fabric so we're going to sew from the top and we're just going to sew right along the zipper the zipper foot's going to allow us to get nice and close to the zipper without going on top of it just want to make sure everything is lined up nicely And then when you get down to the zipper pull, you're gonna wanna move that just because you don't wanna hit it with your needle. And we're gonna lift our foot and we'll move the zipper out of the way entirely. Okay, so this is how it should look. And then we're going to do a top stitch. So we're going to fold the fabric over and we're just going to sew along the folded edge of that fabric. It's going to help it lay nice and flat, uh, make it look more polished. I like to raise my stitch length a bit and I just moved my zipper foot to the other side just because I'm coming at my zipper on the opposite side now. And we'll just sew right down that. And then once you get to your zipper pull again you want to get that out of the way. Especially older machines, they have a tendency to power through zippers and smash off the needle into your face. Okay. So that is how it should look. Okay, so the same thing we did with the this side we're going to do with the other piece and we're going to lay that on top and we're going to try to line it up perfectly with the other piece of fabric yeah. because it's woven it's giving me all these little threads and 
And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew down and then we're going to fold over the fabric and do a nice top stitch. So we have our panel done. Now this panel should end up measuring the same amount as this. Now, if you just lay it on top, we're pretty much bang on, which is great. So depending on your zipper size, if it is a little big, then you can just trim off, um, you know, the sides until it measures to be the exact thickness of this, which is about 3.5 inches. So just make sure that these panels are the same size. And now we can start to install our little handle. So we are going to have this be the bottom. So let's say you're holding the cushion. This is gonna be the bottom and then this is gonna be the top. So we're going to put the strap on the top like that. Now if you wanted to install this into the seam um, you could do that. You could just go like this and as you're constructing the um, cushion then you can just stick that in there and it would be absolutely perfect. Um, but I think today I'm going to do it this way. And now I already singed off the edges of my strap. I just use a lighter because this is basically plastic and you're just going to burn off the edges so it stops fraying. Now I'm going to fold my little strap down and I'm going to, hold on, <laughs> I'll just clip it like that. I'll get my pins. And I'm really just going to eyeball this because I don't really know the exact measurements. So I'm just going to put it in the center and I'll put a pin I'm just gonna make sure that it's even on both sides. Once I get it placed, I'll, I'll tell you how far away from the edges it is. Let's see. Okay, so it's about five inches. About five inches from either side. Yeah, we'll do that. That's good. And we have the one side folded under. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew the sides, the ends, and then we'll sew again and kind of make, you can make like a box or just do another row of stitches about one inch in. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that it's centered and I will do oh I'm on a wrong stitch okay doing a straight stitch And just to make it secure, I kind of did it back and forth. And then we'll go up about an inch. And then we'll do And if you wanted to do an X, keep your needle in, lift your presser foot, and then pivot. And then again, you can go up the side. 
And then again, you can go the other side. Now I'm using white thread, of course, just so that you can see. But if you wanted to do a matching thread, then you won't see it as much, but that is basically what. And then that'll be really strong and you won't have to worry about it ripping off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side super fast. <laughs> okay, so now we have both of those panels ready to go and we can start to assemble the actual cushion part. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take um, one of the larger pieces of fabric. So it doesn't matter which one. Um, we're going to take the sides and we're going to line them up with the edges. Now you can clip all of these down if you want to. At the same time and then sew all four sides. It's pretty straightforward once you get going. And then I take my other one and line that side up. Now when you're sewing this, you are actually going to sew, or you're gonna start and stop a quarter of an inch short. So you're gonna start a quarter of an inch in, sew all the way to the end, and then stop a quarter of an inch before you get to the end. So you'll see why once we get going. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this side. And then clip this side. Okay, <laughs> another one bites the dust. Okay, so so after you've done all of the sides, um, then you're going to line up the side panels and you're gonna do a quarter of an inch seam allowance there and then that's gonna close that gap that um, you left here for your little from stopping and starting kind of thing. So this allows you to um, sew this perfectly. So that's why you want to leave a quarter of an inch when you start and stop. Same on all. So as I'm making this, I'm actually going to be only sewing a little bit of this section. And that's because this, I'm going to be making this into the double size version. So if you are just making this cushion, which is a great size and perfect as a gift, um, but if you want to have a larger cushion, which is the one that I'll be making after this one, then you can go ahead and just sew this straight up. But because I'm going to be adding something to this and then making a second cushion, making this twice the size, which is going to have more surface area for my legs, then um, I'm just going to be sewing a little bit and leaving that open and you'll see why later on but just keeping that in mind if you are going to be going on to do the double version okay okay so i'm going to sew the side that has the handle and we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're going to start a quarter of an inch down So 
it's ready. I might end up doing that serger. You can wait till the end if you want to, if you do decide to. And then you can do both sides. You can just serge those edges and then it'll be fine. Stop quarter of an inch short. Just like that. And then we'll go to the next side. section that has a zipper in it like I said before I'm going to be leaving a big gap on this one I'm only sewing about two inches and then I'm going to go all the way down to the end Okay, we're gonna zoom right in here so that we can see what we're doing. So this is the corner, and like I said, there is the gaps that I made, so you didn't sew to the corner. So now when we go to line up these sides, line up that first. Now when you do your quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're going to go right down there and then that is just going to miter that corner there and just straight along there and then there won't be a hole there or anything and that'll be perfect. So we will just do that to all four sides. And then you're going to go over your zipper here. So you're just going to make sure that I usually double, triple over that just because I want to make sure that, that is nice and strong. All my clips are breaking. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with this corner. And because we still have to put the other side of the cushion on, we're actually going to start sewing a quarter of an inch down again. Okay. So sewing a quarter of an inch down and then we are going to sew right down and then that should close that up. And by doing that, I did do some double back tacks on the zipper just to make sure that it is nice and strong. And you'll see that my hole is closed up and I have a perfect little corner right there. I'm just gonna do all four of the other, or all three of the other sides. I'm gonna do all four first.
Okay, so now the last step for just your basic cushion is to attach the bottom panel. So um, it's pretty much the same idea. We're just going to line up the sides and evenly clip all of your sides. And you don't need a hole to turn it because you have your zipper. Now, if you want to open your zipper a little bit just to make sure you have access to it, um, if it's not already open, see because mine is a zipper by the yard, it's still technically closed at the one end, so I just need to make sure that I did that. And tuck that handle in. And because I have sewed a quarter of an inch down, then I can sort of kind of move this fabric out of the way. So I'm going like this. And then when I sew this one side, I'm just going to kind of push that fabric down so I can get that perfect corner there. And then we'll do the other corners, other sides. And the uh, waterproof canvas is a, sometimes a little bit hard to get through the machine just because it does have this plasticky um, coating on it. So if you do have a Teflon foot, you want to use that. That helps it glide through the machine a little bit easier. Okay, just gonna do that all the way around, and you could just kind of just do it in one uh, pass if you need to. So yeah, I'm just gonna start a quarter of an inch in, and then when I get around to the other side, then as I sew that fabric up, it will close the gap. But make sure that my fabric is lined up perfectly, so we don't have a crooked cushion. And we will just show right down. Oopsie. Because of that plasticky coating, I'm just sort of helping it along with my arm in the back, just pulling it along. But it's not too difficult. It's not like sewing vinyl or something like that. <laughs> not like sewing, you know, really sticky vinyl. I'm just going to stop at a quarter of an inch early and then I'll just kind of pivot the fabric and just kind of keep going. Again, quarter of an inch early. And you're just folding that. Go back and get these people together and, and, and do this thing where you just sit around and and have a conversation and I got, you know, a woman who whose child was killed at the Newtown school shoot, someone else whose who, who, who daughter was killed by her boyfriend, a man who shot his own brother by accident when he was a kid. Very interesting perspective because you never hear from that person. You know, you hear you, you get news stories about the tragedy that the guy has to go through life. Uh, you know, having had that accident, that shooting accident. Okay, so now we have all of our sides done. 
so we can go ahead and stuff it now like I said before this is for the next step um, but I am just going to open my zipper pretend that there's not a big hole here and the zipper will have nice large opening we can flip it right sides out now the zipper is really just in case you want to throw this in the wash so that's what that's for um, <clears throat> if you decided you didn't want to throw it in the wash ever um, you can skip the zipper and then that would make this question go a lot faster so it's really up to you what you want to do when it comes to that kind of stuff and that's the great thing about this little cushion here is that um, I'm going to show you a few fun things that you can do with it after um, and really make it better um, and you more usable and especially if you're like me you have a fairly large property where you don't want to take a couple trips and you want everything uh, just in, like with you then uh, you'll like the, the next part coming up so there we have it we just do up that zipper we have a cute little handle right here and then now you have a waterproof kneeling pad perfect to do all of your gardening chores okay so we're going to be working on uh, a second pad so everything's going to be the same except that i added a second piece of waterproof canvas so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to be adding a pocket um, a pocket so you can put your gloves maybe your little hand pruners a little shovel just something that you can um, use to transport the uh, your things with you when you go to do your gardening so these pieces are exactly the same this is going to be all for the one side um, I didn't have more of this so that's why I'm using the waterproof canvas so I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it down about a half an inch and then I'm going to fold it down again like what is that inch and a half I'm just gonna give it a good a good size hem and that's just gonna make things a lot more um, just stronger but it also just requires less thinking because all the pieces are the same <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna give myself about two two and a half inches here just so I have a nice big pocket and if you want to um, make this pocket into sections so if you want to have a section that was perfect for your pruners or your gloves or whatever just to have things or you can just have one large pocket now now this pocket is going to be on the inside of the folded cushion so you don't have to worry about things really falling out um, but this pocket is mainly just for storage and not while you're using the cushion because then you'll be kneeling on those things unless of course you just have gloves in there which is completely fine so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hem this I'm just going to do a stitch right along there and then that will create the pocket panel so the only other thing that I'm adding is another piece of webbing and I have cut a 14 inch piece and you'll see this will be what attaches the two cushions together so okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew along this folded edge and I think I'm gonna do one more stitch at the top just to finish off that fold. Okay, so now I have that done. And if you want to base this and then do your sections, then you can just treat this as one piece of fabric and then refer back to the tutorial and then just kind of make the cushion um, up to the point um, where you left the hole in your pouch like I did. So I'm just going to do a quick, an eighth of an inch um, seam allowance here.
just to keep the fabric together. I'm going to do the sides first and then I'll suction it off. Okay, so if you want to um, get your tools and figure out how much room you want, so if you have some fancy pruners or something like that and you want to make sure that they fit nice and snug, um, if not, you can just kind of divide evenly, like you could put a spot for you know plant markers or things like that, like you really could just do whatever um, your needs are. So I'm just gonna do a spot for like gloves and then pruners, I think. So we'll just do like nine and a quarter. And she needs a marking pencil and I'll just draw a line. And then I can sew along that. And then I'll have two little pouches. They are rather deep, so you don't want things to be able to get lost in them. So you wanna be able to have it nice and roomy so that you can access your things. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom and then we'll go up. When we get to the top of the fabric, we're going to um, go over the fabric one stitch and then we will back tack, go forward. Just really want to reinforce this as this will have more stress on it. Um, if you wanted to do a second row of stitches right next to it, you could do that also just to give it some extra um, security. You do one right, right next to it. And then you have your little pockets. How cute is that? Okay, so now we have both of our slip covers completed. So now we're going to attach them to each other. And we're going to do that with this piece of webbing. And we're going to put that in the hole that we left. So we're just going to take that and we're going to put that into the seam and we're going to try to make it even on both sides I'm using webbing because I want it to be really strong because there is going to be a folding action that happens with the webbing and I just want to make sure that the webbing um, is strong enough to be able to withstand that and there will be some pressure on it when you're kneeling on it. So it's going to be about two, about two inches from either side and we're just going to close up that um, seam with the webbing on the inside. When you get to the webbing, we're just going to kind of backstitch over top of it, sew all the way down. is how it's going to look. Now I'm going to do another pass just to make sure that that is nice and secure. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to attach that piece of webbing into the other one. So I'm just gonna flip this and we'll have the webbing like that. And then we're gonna put that on the inside of this and then we will pull the remaining webbing through that seam. And we wanna make it so that it is even 
evenly placed. Now I may have sewed this a little bit more than I needed to. So I just need to stitch rip. And you want to make this as even as possible so that my cushions line up. So even if you want to stick the corner into the corner and then see where the webbing falls. And then we'll pin or clip. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew right across. Now, now that I have it in the machine, I'm going to kind of push the webbing out a little more because my webbing's a little thick um, and I don't want there to be a huge gap. So you can see on the inside, we just want can feel that there is about a quarter of an inch between yeah we just want we just want to pull it out a bit because if not when you put the um, when you open up your two pieces of um, cushion then there will be like a gap so if you can make it as close as possible then that would be ideal. Um, okay, so my camera cut out as I was doing it, but I was going to show you that this is kind of how much webbing you want to be able to see. Um, if not, then when you go to open and close your cushion, then there's going to be a bare gap. So that's why I pulled it out um, about a quarter of an inch. Now it's going to be nice and close, so hopefully when we go to turn this right side out now you can see that the cushions are connected so the next part is to stuff it with our foam so i have two pieces of foam and I'll just, because these zippers are so nice and wide, it makes it fairly easy. Just like that. And then we'll zip that up. And we'll get the other piece of foam. If you want to roll it a little bit, that also helps. And then it'll kind of unroll on itself. And then we do that. And then we can flip it over. And they're attached 
and then you can fold it up. Oh my goodness. <gasps> this is amazing. I poke out my little corners here. This is the bottom view. I'm gonna be pulling threads for days. Like I said, I can put all those little edges into the serger. Uh-oh. <gasps> I have a hole. Oh, that's okay. I'll fix that. But how cute. Is that and then you can keep the dirt on the outside and then hopefully it'll just kind of dust itself off and then you have so much surface area I like to have lots of room especially because sometimes I like to just sit on the ground you know not necessarily kneel because uh, it hurts your knees Oh, cute and then you just kind of and if you wanted to put like a little tie in here or you could put like just install a little snap here and just kind of snap it together when you're done and we can put our oh my goodness 